Hi everyone, it's Philip at NYC Music Services. Today we're talking about percussion mapping in Sibelius. And percussion mapping is a way to ensure that your music not only looks correct for a human being, a percussionist, to play it, but also for Sibelius to actually uh, interpret your music correctly upon playback. So uh, before we go any further, I just want to mention that uh, Daniel Spreadberry over at Sibelius Software actually has a very good percussion mapping tutorial already and you can see the address up on your screen and what I'm intending to do is perhaps reinforce a few things that he says uh, come at things from a slightly different direction and maybe uh, shed one or two new points on percussion mapping so I'd definitely encourage you to to uh, check out his tutorial either before you go any further with this one or after you uh, uh, finish working on this one. So uh, with that in mind, uh, let's go a little bit further. So let's take a look at what a percussion uh, instrument actually is. And before you start designing your own in Sibelius, you might actually want to find um, if there's one that actually works already for you. There are many, many percussion maps that are predefined. And you find them either by going to create instruments and finding a new instrument to select to, uh, select and add to your score or in the startup dialog when you start a new piece it's the same dialog and you see here already there's so many um, percussion instruments orchestral band drum kit african latin um, other and you really have a whole lot of instruments from which to choose that being said, sometimes you encounter a situation where you need to modify one of these or just go ahead and create your own uh, because you're a composer and you have a certain way that you want to uh, do things or you just want to um, uh, specify a little bit in more detail what a um, percussionist might be doing. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and create a new percussion map. Okay, so what I want to do first of all is select this uh, staff and go to House Style, Edit um, Instruments. And by selecting this first, that ensures that Sibelius will automatically uh, come up with the intended percussion instrument. So what I want to do is actually create a new instrument based on the existing symbols. And I could go ahead and edit this, but I want to keep this around just in case I want to use it for some reason. These are actually stored with your document and so you can then export them to a house style and use them in other documents if you wish. So we're going to say new instrument and we're going to say yes we want to create a new instrument based on symbols. And this controls the name that appears in the dialog. We'll just say custom one. Whoops. Custom one. And this actually tells Sibelius that this is in fact an unpitched percussion instrument and not uh, a pitched instrument which would be a flute, clarinet, oboe, or even a pitched percussion instrument such, a, such as a vibes, timpani, xylophone. We want unpitched percussion so that's checked for us already and this is how by default the, the uh, instrument will show up in your score. We're going to go to edit staff type and this is what the default symbol instrument looks like in Sibelius. So let's go ahead and actually um, delete all these. I'll go through what starting from scratch might look like. And let's actually go, let's actually go to this first key right here for the time being. Say you're a percussionist and you want to define an instrument based on this key, meaning that if a uh, percussionist sees something on this uh, staff space, they play the tam-tam. This one they play the large gong, this one they play the medium gong, and, and uh, so forth. So we need a five-line staff. So we go to general, we're going to create a five-line staff, and then go back to percussion. We actually don't even need, need to click OK yet. Now we've got a five-line staff. You have to think of this as if it were a treble staff, even though we are going to have a percussion clef. It's just a way to keep the note names straight. So we're going to say new, and let's go ahead and create one. Whoops, we'll bring it up to the D line here. And this is actually important. We say we see here it says input using pitch. You see that they're not actually the same right now. This says C4. This is actually D4 in if, if it were a treble clef. This allows you to actually input a pitch on your computer keyboard or your music keyboard 
that is a different pitch than what is actually displayed on the staff. And there are reasons that you would want to do this, which I'll get into a little bit later in the tutorial. But for now, let's try to keep these the same. So we've got D4, okay. And we've got a snare drum sound there, but we'll ignore that for the time being. Um, what we want to do now is choose a sound that uh, corresponds to what we want over here in this uh, key that our composer has set out for us. So we're going to go down, and I'm actually... Uh, uh, let's, I'm going to move this up so you can see a little bit more what's happening. Choose a sound and say uh, GPO percussion, uh, orchestral percussion, which is what we're using right now. And you see here it says um, Tam Tam right there. Great. Okay, so I'll move this even further so you can see everything. And now we get a nice Tam Tam sound when we click on that. Okay, so let's continue on with this um, procedure here. We're going to say another new uh, instrument uh, or another new uh, symbol I should say get the we'll move that up to the F line right there and here it is now these are in sync F4 also corresponds to this F4 over here we want this to be the large gong because that's what our composer has told us that we want we're gonna say metal and there it is large gong right there great let's hear it okay say new keep going clicking very well but uh, you want to just if you misclick just move this up or down to get it to the right pitch and let's continue on now we're gonna say medium gong great let's keep going new and move that up to the C C5 and let's say we want this to be medium gong Actually, you know what, what did I do here? Medium gong two, let's do medium gong one. And then this one, we don't actually have a high gong, but medium gong two, I think will suffice for now. So there's medium gong two, that's good. That's good for now. Let's keep going. There's the E, E5, choose sound. We want this to be our piatti. Piatti symbol one, that's good. Eh, I don't love that. Let's try a different sound. Piatti symbol 2, that's pretty good. Okay. Keep going here. Suspended symbol. G5, that's good. And suspended symbol. Well, we don't really have a suspended symbol. We have a crash symbol, which I think is basically a mallet on a symbol. That'll be good enough for now. Now, if you're playing the suspended cymbal, if you know anything about percussion, which I assume you do, um, there's different ways to hit it. And you wouldn't actually have the um, player use different staff lines for this. It's all one instrument. It's all one suspended cymbal. But we need different sounds that uh, Sibelius has in its sound library to trigger different, uh, you know, to reflect different playing styles. So say we want a choke playing style, that is to say you, say you would hit the cymbal very quickly and then dampen it. Well, we actually have that, and the, the way you would actually uh, display that, you would have that whoops, still on your G line, but you would actually most likely put a staccato mark on it to choke. And there it is right there. And so what we want to do then is choose a corresponding sound. And there it is, choke symbol. And what that means is that anytime Sibelius sees something that is on the G line with a staccato mark on it, it will play the choke symbol as opposed to the crash symbol. Listen to the difference. Okay. So what if you need to roll the suspended symbol? Well, you can do that too. Again, you would have it still at the on the same position of the staff. There it is. And we're going to say instead of a staccato, you would usually use a tremolo for that. Here we'll use the eight tremolos, which actually means three tremolo lines. And go ahead and then choose the sound. The sound that we want in this case is, well, let's go with cymbal roll crescendo. Okay, so all three of these are on the same line. It's the same instrument, but because of the different articulations, Sibelius plays them differently. It actually uses different uh, sounds in its sound library. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a little uh, 
chart with these different um, sounds in mind.